Ohio State and Michigan are going to have first in April of this year. For the first time, they're going to have their spring games nationally televised on Big Fox. Those games taking place April 13th, April 20th, in the middle of the UFL schedule, which we'll talk about on Thursday. But I want to take apart both of these spring games, really, and talk about why I'm excited about them. First, being on national television is nothing to thumb your nose at. And shout out to the bosses at Fox who saw ESPN and what they had done for Jackson State, Colorado is going, well, we got that right now, especially with two enormous names in the sport and the two programs that have run the Big Ten as you have new entrants into the Big Ten in the form of USC, Washington, Oregon, and UCLA. I think it is important that Ohio State and Michigan get to be on a national stage and really get to remind people, yeah, we have run this conference for the better part of, well, ever, right? It's It's been theirs. They've traded who is actually the champ, but I challenge you to name the last time that a team not named Ohio State or Michigan won the Big Ten championship in football, okay? That's what we're talking about when you get to play your spring game on Big Fox in April. Now, Let's zero in on Ohio State for just a second here because top line here, this is the most exciting, if not the most talented roster in football. I am salivating at the thought of what this program might be able to do in 2024, given its star power. Julian Salen and Aaron Nolan, I want to see take snaps during the spring game, and I want to see them throw the ball around. I don't want to see him take snaps and hand the ball to no tailback, okay? I'm going to get enough of Dallin Hayden. I don't need that. I need Julius saying, slinging it. Run four verticals. Let's see what you got, right? Put Aaron Nolan in the floods package or in levels concepts, and let me see them rip it around. And I want to see them rip it around because I'm so jealous of this staff and this <laughs> The folks that play and recruit to go Ohio State because you get to watch Caleb Downs and Jeremiah Smith go one on one all year, all, all, all year. I think Caleb Downs is the best defensive back in football. He lost his black stripe earlier today, by the way. So all the folks that think he's returning to Alabama, well, he blooded over at Columbus now. That's that's just not happening, right? And then Jeremiah Smith is absolutely turning heads at practice, man. Like. The way that folks are talking about him ought to terrify everybody else. He's a true freshman. You know, he's a true freshman that Brandon Ennis is telling anybody that will listen. Somehow, some way, that dude got to get on the football field. What he can do is ridiculous. And then I remember it's not just Jeremiah Smith and Brandon Ennis. It's also Mega Ibuka who is going to be leading that receiving core, right? It, It's Carnell Tate. Like, they're going to be legitimately awesome again at wide receiver. And they've got options. And I'm talking about the two freshmen that I want to see sling the rock because I know what kind of a quarterback Will Howard is. The kind that can lead Kansas State to not just the Big 12 championship, but knock off undefeated Texas Christian who played in the national championship game just two years ago. Okay? Then I get to see Ryan Day on a sideline without having to look at a play card for the first time like ever. I doubt that the man is actually going to have to consult his play card at all because his mentor, his coach in college, Chip Kelly is running the offense. And we all know what Chip Kelly is capable of as an offensive play caller. Give him the toys that are this quarterback room, which is ridiculous. That wide receiver room, which is ridiculous. Quinshawn Judkins, Travion Henderson, and Dallin Hayden, which is ridiculous. And an offensive line that feels like it can put it all together this year. That's going to be so much fun. They might average 50 a game. That's what they're capable of doing. Defensively, they could be just as good as they were last year. And remember, the Ohio State defense carried Ohio State all year long. It was not an offense that operated to the level that we have come to expect from Ryan Day, which is another way in which he's acknowledging, hey, being the head coach is taking a lot more out of me, and the offense is not going as well as it should. So I'm going to hand over those controls. Meanwhile, Jim Knowles is like, nah, I got it on defense. It's cool. I got Denzel Burks coming back. I got Lathan Ransom. You know, I got C.J. Hicks dropping down. We'll see where Sonny Styles actually plays. I realize that there's a number of Ohio State fans that believe that Sonny Styles just playing linebacker. You might well be right. 
But I would be shocked if I don't see him in some safety packages. Six foot four, two thirty. There's a lot he can do. He can play at all three levels. He can come off the edge if you want him to. Right? He gives you a versatile player. And then you got Larry Johnson Sr., who is one of the forty highest paid coaches, period, regardless of title, in the sport. Who has said out loud, "Look, guys, I'm not leaving." I'm chasing greatness. I want to win championships. I'm not chasing a paycheck. I'm fine. And he's got two outstanding ends in Jack Sawyer and JT Tuimolau that can get after folks. Like I'm, I'm, I'm telling y'all, I have never been more excited about an Ohio State football season, not just because this roster, but because I know Ryan Day got to have it November 30th. He has to win that game. And in winning that game, probably – not just punches a ticket to the Big Ten championship game because, well, Ohio State and Michigan have run this conference, but gives Ohio State the best shot it has had since 2020 to win a national championship, and that is what they're chasing in Columbus. Meanwhile, that team up north, they get it done. So I'm so excited about that spring game because I want to see – Michigan fans on their nas. I want to see you on your, you can hate me now, okay? I want to see y'all absolutely putting on the black hat and saying, no, hate us. We the champs. Act like the champs, right? Act like y'all been here. And I want to see this place that can hold 110,000 people in the big house full. I mean, y'all ain't got no excuse. Y'all the reigning national champs, running college football. Hell, the Detroit Lions are good. Y'all got every reason to pack that spring game. And I'm going to be very upset right here on this show if Michigan does not lead the nation in attendance for spring games. And you know how much we care about attendance for these free exhibitions, these glorified practices. But you know what? Y'all better pack it in. Y'all better act like it. Y'all better absolutely embrace this. You're going into a historic year where you could see more players drafted from one team than any other team in the entire history of the sport to the NFL. It's not small. I need y'all to step up. Okay. Yeah. 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 You want to give me the business in the comments. That's fine. Go, 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 go do that. Hit me on the tweets, right? RJ didn't rank us in 2021. Sure. RJ didn't rank us 2022 in the preseason. Sure. But now step up, you know, be, be the Michigan men that y'all claim to be right. And women, right? Be that. Let me see. Let me hear James Earl Jones coming out to speakers. You better have him in the kickers knocking like he in the trunk. I have never wanted to see this team absolutely blaring hail to the victors loud enough for them to hear in Columbus more. Okay? I need y'all to be big on your energy. Okay? Meanwhile, on the field, apart from what I want to see for fans, Wink Martindale might be out here fixing what ain't broken. I don't know how to feel about this because the defense that Michigan ran with Mike McDonald and with Jesse Minter is the one that Mink Martindale made famous at Baltimore. Okay. It's his defense, but he's out here saying things like, Hey, we're going to do whatever we got to do to win football games. That means rush three. We'll rush three. If that means bring eight, we'll bring eight. I'm going, Hey, no, 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 no. This Michigan program has had a very defined defensive philosophy on this run dating back to 2021 and it is being sound and it is playing complimentary football. But, you know, Wing Martindale might actually be talking to media like, well, almost everybody else talks to media, which is not to want to reveal anything about what the scheme is to which I'm going, Hey man, do something, tell us anything. But his quote that he gave the Michigan insider was, I'm not going to tell Ryan day or Sark, Steve Sarkeesian, what we're going to do. First of all, the game with Ohio State is in November. It's November 30th. You got a lot of other games you got to play between now and then. You're going to have some injuries. Talk about one that's significant here in a bit. The other one is, you think Steve Sarkeesian gives a damn what you're running in, in March and April? I wouldn't. We're going to run what we run. You're going to run what you run. Let's see if we can't make it do what it do, right? Can't wait for Texas to go up there to Michigan. That's going to be a lot of fun. But the only thing that I think they can agree on among the players when they talk to media is that the scheme is different. Like, there was this really interesting exchange between a couple of these Michigan players, one of them, uh, Mason Graham, where they were talking to media, and they were like, hey, look, this defense is different. Like, we're doing some things we never done. 
and media was cynical going, all right, you don't have to tell us no lies. Like, wh- why? Like, are you just trying to throw us off the scent? And they're going, no, it's legitimately different than anything we have done, for which I'm raising my eyebrow and going, why are you fixing what isn't broken? So it's, it's a rule working on cars, right? Don't look for stuff to fix. Leave that alone. Don't wait for, wait for that to break. Because if you go trying to fix stuff, other thing is going to break. And I feel like that is what we're looking at. And perhaps there's some conclusions to draw from that because news surfaced on Monday that Rod Moore, a three-year starter for Michigan uh, at safety, had blown out his ACL in practice. That means nine of your 11 starters on that defense are basically going to start, if nothing else, on the shelf in Rod Moore's case in 2024, but also you're just going to have to replace that production. Can you do it, right? Like Kenneth Grant, awesome. Mason Graham, awesome. But you need nine other dudes that can absolutely get it uh, get it done out there, along with Will Johnson in that secondary, so forth, so on. I'm curious to see who steps up because Rod Moore made a big play, a couple big plays against Ohio State in the game, and he was playing with a chip on his shoulder. Like that was a dude that very much wanted everybody to know Michigan wanted me and Ohio State didn't and acted like it. Where's that energy going to come from? Where's the Mike Sainer still on this defense? And that's before we start talking about the offense, for which be curious to find out if Sharon Moore continues to call plays or if he actually hands those over to Kirk Campbell, right? It's saying one thing in the spring and doing something else in the fall. We'll see. But you got these 15 practices where I believe they should be used to try to find out who your starting quarterback is going to be. J.J. McCarthy's out the door. Kirk Campbell, his quarterback's coach, has become his offensive coordinator. But then you got Kirk Campbell out here talking about we ain't got a starter in the QB room because, well, everyone's a number one. No, 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 they're not, Kirk. No, 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 they're not. Not everybody can be a number one. That's why we call it number one. You got Alex Origi, Jane Denagle, Davis Warren, and Jaden Davis competing for that spot. But I'm going to make it simple. Okay, since you don't want to tell us who the starter is, I'm going to tell you that it's Alex Origi. Okay, that's a guy who has been in the program, understands the system, and also has snaps playing significant football in the national championship game. Quiet as it is kept, Sharon Moore has been really smart about getting J.J. McCarthy when he was backing up Cade McNamara into the game. Also smart about getting Alex Origi into the game. In 2023, so much so that we're going, nah, now ain't the time for the backups to play. Hey, I want to play. I'm on a bench. I ain't play. Let me play. But that's setting them up, right? I go back to something that actually Ryan Day admitted a couple years back when it was clear to him that C.J. Stroud and Jack Miller, who were competing for the starting job at the time, had not thrown a pass in the previous season. He's going, I got to do better on that. I got to make sure the guys play. The next year, Kyle McCord started, played all against Akron, right? He got the reps that he needed in that, well, pay guarantee game. I think you have set Alex up to be the guy going in 2024. Let's not complicate this and take all of the emotion out of this decision coming in August. If you can get through the spring and announce that guy, announce that guy. Let the team rally around him. Let him know it's his going into week one and make it happen, right? Give him enough room to make some mistakes between now and then as opposed to, all right, it's your turn. Go do that. I hated that. I've always hated that. When somebody walks up to you a few minutes before and says, okay, you're the starter. Man, they're talking about get your mind right in five minutes, in five hours, in five days. No, no. I get being ready and we all want to be ready, but you owe it to these players to give them the best opportunity to be ready when it's time to play. Give them time to ramp up. That's what I'm asking for for Alex Origi. Last thing I think is important about this Michigan spring period as they get set to play on national television for the first time. Tony Alford could be the best thing that ever happened to Donovan Edwards. I realize that there are Ohio State fans that feel some kind of way about that statement. But understand, Donovan Edwards is going to be RB1, right? Tony Alford knew this before he got to Ann Arbor. We all knew it, right? There is no controversy here. That said, you also know the offense that Sharon Moore runs is going to ask the tailback to do a lot of work. Blake Corum got worked out in 2022 and 2023. 
This while Donovan Edwards would show up in big game moments and have big games. Iowa won the Big Ten Championship 2022. Ohio State in 2022, right? This is a man that could break you off a little something, something. And has also been feeling himself for the last couple of years. I understand it, right? But you're talking about a Donovan Edwards who could end up being RB1 in the NFL draft in 2025, provided he has a big year in 2024. And I think Alford showing up, right, on the exit of Mike Hart, is doing everything he can to make sure that happens because his record of producing tailbacks is also one that he would like to keep very high, right? I don't understand why he wouldn't, but you get my point here. I think that Donovan Edwards is going to learn a lot from Alford. I think Alford's going to learn a lot from being at Michigan about what it takes. And then he's obviously going to come in with a tremendous amount of knowledge of their most important foe, that is the Ohio State Buckeyes. If all of that works together the way that I think it can, there's no reason to believe that Donovan Edwards isn't a 1,500-yard back with 15, 20 touchdowns in 2024. And vaults back into that conversation, leading Michigan to what they hope is yet another Big Ten championship and, and perhaps an opportunity to defend their national championship. If you like what you've seen, consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.